All right, today I'm going to use another one of these uh, springs here. And I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to straighten some out so that I can make myself a uh, barbecue fork. All right, right here we have ourselves some stew. Amazing thing about stew, it is basically a whole bunch of vegetables, some tomato, and some sort of meat. While we cook the stew, because stew is a slow cooking process, which makes almost anything taste wonderful, um, we're going to make ourselves some blacksmithing projects today. And while we blacksmith, we stew. Okay, now normally you would think... Uh, best way to straighten out this spring might be to just throw it in a uh, coal forge. Now if I have my coal forge running that might be a good idea but the fact is if I want to straighten this spring the best way to do it is just a propane torch heat the actual area that I want to heat and then straighten it out. That's the best and fastest way to do this work just take a propane torch heat the steel and straighten it now I could put it in my mini forge I could put it in a cold forge I could put it in a gas forge make the whole spring hot but if I just want to straighten this spring the quickest most efficient way is just use a propane torch cost me a lot less money, a lot less coal, a lot less time and heat up portions of this spring and straighten it a little bit at a time. That's the best thing to do. So let's uh, go do this and we'll do that step by step, one by one and that's what we're going to do. Okay, but it's been about 10 minutes straightening this spring, maybe 20. Uh, a lot of times I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking about my wife. I gotta tell you, fellas, if you're gonna be successful or unsuccessful, 90% of your ability to be successful in the world, if you got a wife or if you have a significant other or a spouse, they are the one that's gonna determine whether or not you can succeed. You know, like it or not, you can have the best, most skill in the world. If your wife does not support you, you will have no success. If your wife supports you 100%, you will be very successful, even if you're kind of crappy. Uh, don't ask me why that is, but that's just the reality. I'm sitting here, I'm straightening this spring up. All right, now... Uh, I'm going to go to my mini forge so I can take this here, heat it up, make it round, heat up the other end, and uh, fork it out, spread it, um, chisel it, and do a few other things to make this uh, a successful piece here that I want to do. But yeah, you need to consider, is your spouse supporting you or not supporting you? You need to let her know because... You're, the woman in your life is 110% your success. She supports you, you succeed. She does not support you, you will fail. That's just the reality of the world. Like it, don't like it. Uh, if you got some other facts on that, go ahead and shoot them at me. Okay, the next step in this barbecue fork is I'm going to need to do some upsetting. So I'm going to use my anvil ruler that I made just from a strip of uh, soft steel or iron. Really, it's true iron. Uh, it's hard to find nowadays. And I uh, made a mark at one and a half inches all the way around. Some guys will just mark one spot. I prefer to mark all the way around because when it's hot, you know, sometimes one side's hard to find. And then I made another mark after scooting that out to one and a half inches right where I'm going to want my next bend for the handle because at the top I want a curly Q actually it's called a scroll but you know I'm just calling it a curly Q a little spiral design but I'm going to do that later 
and down here at the bottom I made myself a mark at four inches you know from the uh, end of where I want my scroll all the way around all four sides utilizing this little simple ruler I made in a vise or on my anvil um, and all you need to make this is a uh, piece of flat bar and uh, a uh, cold chisel now because I do this some of it's hot some of it's cold heat this little piece of iron up and it is flat true rolled iron which is really hard to find nowadays that's why I love this stuff it's really easy to work um, you know I've heard some different opinions on whether it needs to be hotter or colder but I'll tell you what when you're ta working with rolled iron not mild steel but actual iron uh, that stuff is soft really easy to work uh, and so what I did is I used a regular ruler and after I got this bent over my anvil I took a measurement from the top to the bottom and at a half inch and one inch I made a mark a half mark a whole mark then a half mark a whole mark for two a half mark a whole mark for three half mark a whole mark for four just using a cold chisel on uh, this when it's warm and uh, then I made like little numbers just for reference in case you get stupid because face it when you're busy you're doing stuff sometimes you uh, you lose your head so I made a one a two a three and a four just little tick marks with that and making this was really simple you just bend it over the anvil so you got yourself 290s so it fits drops right on and off um, I got a nice long piece but then at the very end, I made this little curl or scroll. Uh, you know, that's not really there for decorative purposes. That's so that when I put this on, if I need to get it out of the way, I can pick it up. I can move it. I can slide it. And it has been, well, I would say indispensable in any kind of measurement. Because if I need to prepare for tongs or uh, any other piece... I could take a really quick measurement up to the width of my anvil of in half inches because most of the stuff I'm working is going to be in half inches, and that's what we got here. And next, I'll be uh, I'll be bending this over one way, and then I'll be taking this another heat there, and I'll be bending that or maybe two heats, one heat, we'll see. And then I'll be bending this the opposite direction because the point is of the center part. I don't want to upset the part that I want to scroll because I want to taper that out to a nice like point and then curl it around. But I need a handle and the handle I want to upset the material. Now don't get upset. That means to thicken the handle uh, material because I'm going to be splitting this. And this is only about 3 8 spring steel. So, you know, that's not real thick for splitting. So I want to upset it about to almost about a half inch. Uh, that's quite a bit. That's not like three quarter, which is double of three eighths, but a half inch is good. And, uh, so that'll take that down quite a bit. But then I'm going to widen it out a little bit and split it. And when I split a half inch, it'll give me two pieces of one quarter. And then I can, uh, work on that handle. I'll go over that a little bit more when I'm doing it. All right. So that's where we're at now. go then we'll start working on upsetting that I'm upsetting this just a little bit here so I can split it
Okay, let's straighten this back out so we get ready to make a split. Now that we've upset a little bit, that'll make it easier to split that in the place you want it split. Square everything up, make it nice and even. So we can define our handle and our taper. Okay, on this uh, here barbecue fork, upsetting that just wasn't going to cut it with that thin rod. So we did we did a couple of faggot welds, folded it over, welded it to itself. You can see that weld line in there, and uh, we just about got her worked down to where we want. And uh, then we'll be uh, make sure we refine that weld a little bit, and then we'll do a slit along here, turn it over, and do a slit along there. All the way through leaving uh, you know not cutting through here or here but basically just down the middle and that'll give us enough to make a twist and a, then a basket okay as you uh, see we've uh, I've made this hold down here which basically works by giving this little smack and then that'll hold my work for me when I use two hands. And to loosen I just tap it back here and it lifts up. Now I already started doing uh, some slitting with a slitting chisel. Um, I tried the angle grinder. Slitting chisel actually works better. So that's what we're going to be doing. Slitting this this way and then slitting it that way.
Look at that. That's what's going to be our basket. I got to clean it up a little bit with the hot rash. We'll be using this uh, hot rash file to cut off all that extra BS. Look at there. Complete twist. Here, all nice and split. What it is, I got this little jig I used after I split it to kind of wrap it around here, and then come over here and tap it down, adjust it a little bit. And then I've been working on cleaning it up some before I blacken it and everything. Get pretty much come along with that barbecue fork be able to be used on a grill soon. I have to make sure that when I lay it down on the anvil, we've got a nice bowed curve. Got that slope there, just like a real fork. Just tap that down over the edge. And there we go. Barbecue fork coming along. Finished barbecue fork. Our uh, basket split when I was untwisting it, so I just put a ring on the end. A lot of work for uh, nothing there, but we do have a finished barbecue fork. We'll have to make another one at another time, but here you go. One very usable barbecue fork. Now, when using your blackening agent on this, I just use a cooking oil to season it like cookware. Anything you use food on, you don't want to use uh, like uh, synthetics, you know, so like linseed oil. So I go with, like, you can use beeswax, olive oil, corn oil, one of those, any type of basic cooking oil. But there we go, barbecue fork, all nice and finished. Still too hot to touch the bare hands, but uh, ooh, she's sharp. And this will barbecue. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Barbecue fork, nice handle. It is now this, used to be this, now this, and if I can do it, you can do it too.